So what is the meeting objective for today? Discuss the club further and sign up for more, more members. If you know anybody else who might be, you think who might be interested in the club, please let them know. Announcing the competition, Mark and Lindsay from SAS. Um, set up next steps to finalize our very short-term goals of what we might do together in the few weeks before the new semester starts. Any, any question for this part? I guess no. not. We're good to okay. go. All right, so we're getting started. So what should you have in order to be in this club? Find one common interest or belief that you share with at least 10 other students so we can form this club together and what we need to do we need to pick a club's package at any student association office be sure to make two copies i will take care of these ones so you don't have to worry about and then submit your complete package i will submit that one so what we get from the george brown in terms of benefits we receive 300 dollars per semester for events, such as if we have to go somewhere for a competition, let's say out of Toronto, out of GTA, I think college will, as far as I know, sponsor us with the amount of $300 per semester. And then they also provide us meeting space and they can book rooms for us. And then and you can check get, out. And we get to use Blackboard. Collaborate. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, we can, we can meet up weekly if you wish. Um, well, we will have to meet up weekly if we are in the competition. So. Maybe more than a week, actually, two times, three times in a week. So the clubs are listed here if you want to check the college, if you want to join another club apart from this one. So who can join to the club? Anybody can join by saying anybody, any GBC student that is a data enthusiast and wants to play in the data analytics sandbox. That's what Karen said here. Very fancy. <laughs> Might include students from B412, B406, 409, 412, 413. Oops. Newbies or more experienced analytics. Anybody can join. So what's our vision and mission? Students will, be, will have an opportunity to either start learning any application they want to learn, or you have been keeping it in a hall for, for a long time and you want to learn now, or get more comfortable with the applications that you know already. So you can kind of you can be an advanced level of what you what you know already, and the regular meetings with other members will allow students to work on data sets and widen their knowledge by learning from each other. After reaching some certain level, after we know, after we feel that oh we are good to go, we know this application well enough to enter in, in a competition. We can register for data competitions to represent George Brown, such as from SAS or if you want to do by yourself, if you want to meet with other um, people online, they're not supposed to be at George Brown, like they can be anywhere around the world. So you can also join them to have a competition together. I put a website here. I don't know if you have heard that before called Kaggle. This is the website that people gather around and go into one competition, either individually or in a group. There's a prize at the end as well. So it's very useful. They give show you a very much. Yeah. Show of hands, Should has I... anybody used Kaggle before? Oh, but uh, talked about it, uh, know about it, and certainly know about it in this uh, industry for sure. Okay, and I see that yeah. uh, Paige has used it too. And, and we also have Ripen that we could use. Good. There are a bunch of, there are a bunch of websites that you can use, but the Kaggle is uh, kind of, um, like most of the, most of people most of the people know when then some like data analytics users they have been using this one for a long time. Yeah. So it's a very good website and they just give you mass data raw data. The first apparently you have to clean manipulate the data and apparently visualize it and get your insights from that data. And this club will be an additional source for the students in order to get ready for jobs apart from your classes apart from what you learn from those classes. This is also very beneficial for you to learn uh, also for like uh, hobbies or like anything that you want to learn apart from classes in terms of data, you can learn in this club with other members as well. And you have the chance to upskill apart from what they learn from the class. So getting organized, early club decisions, 
club application submission. That's what I'm going to do. Meeting times and frequency, we will have a schedule. Vision mission, we went through it. Creating club name and design logo. I don't know if anybody is capable of doing this. That will be nice. Club, op club operating principles, club officers. Oh, did you see Alan's, Alan's hand was up? Oh, then all of a sudden, yes. put it down. I, I think that was uh, left from uh, Kaggle website. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So the setting up communication and team tools, create LinkedIn group for communication, create group web page, set up general email, set up club project inventory, set up event write and promote events so we can all go all together, either individually or as a group. Set up speaker and create data community events calendar. So planning club activity. So what we have, we have simulation competition with SAS, Cortex, April between April 17th and April 24th. And then we have career planning session by Greg Pellet, April 3rd. You want to take over the scaron if you want? No, no, that's good. It, I've uh, sent out the announcement, right? Okay. So the GBC Career Center hosts a session on preparing for a job interview, updating resumes and cover letters. Um, counselor session on reducing anxiety. You might have been going through already with the applications or softwares that you want to learn or you have been learning. So these are helpful tools for you. And also stress during times of COVID-19 apparently and the job search. Um, for the long haul, learning new tools and software together, as I said earlier, exploring business challenges of interest using open source data, such as from the websites Kaggle or any other website that you know that you can recommend for the group. Who is going to the next page? It's not me. Okay. Signing up clients, especially non-profits, for a chance to work with real data. That's one of the most important parts for us as a club. Participating in, in online and face-to-face -face case competitions, that's what we are going to do. Creating meetups with the guest speakers in topics in interest to the group. Speed mentoring, participating together in other data meetups across the city by the help of college maybe when they finance us. Support the annual GBC Business Analytics Symposium like we had our first one and among others. So these are the members we have so far signed up for the club. We have more than 30 people. Um, most of them are students and we have a few alumni. And if I have a mentor here, fortunately he's not with us today, but he will be next time. But we will be sharing this recording session with him. And so that, can you go back to that page? Is everybody on this list? Everybody here today on this list? Yeah, make sure you're you're on this list. If you are not, please sign up from the link that we provided on the left side. So we know that you're official member of the club. So I can put you in here. I see Michael's there. Is Paige, are you there, Paige? Um, um, I don't think I see my name there, but I'll, I'll follow through the link after um, this okay. and add myself. Okay. Okay, okay perfect. Um, any other question for this part? Uh, uh, are teachers supposed to sign up for the club, like from the link, or or we know that they are there all the time, so they don't have to? Do you want them to? Um, I think that will be nice to you, you know. Okay, we will then, right, Tom? Alan? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Thank we'll kind of. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, our first competition on assess will take over from here. All right. <clears throat> can everyone hear me okay? This is Lindsay from SAS. Yeah, I can. Okay, so now let me share our presentation. And Mark, are you there? I don't see him on. Oh, yes, he is on. He is on. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. Can everyone see this presentation now? Yes. Okay. Um, perfect. So on that list of folks signed up, it was actually, I recognized a lot of the student names from our Safe Roads competition earlier um, this year. So that's great to see. Um, 
Mark and I um, are happy to offer the students a we're going to do an online analytics simulation game called Cortex. So we're going to kind of set it up today. We'll give you a little bit of background on SAS as well as what the competition entails. Um, but just know that all of the details and, and kind of the nitty gritty will be announced um, when we launch it in mid-April or so. All right. So first things first, SAS, who are we? Um, to empower and inspire with the most trusted analytics. That's our mission statement. Um, we are a global company based in North Carolina. Um, we have about 350 employees across Canada. We've been around, if you're not familiar with SAS, we've been around for close to 45 years now. Our current president and CEO founded the company in 1976. Um, and he actually, when he founded the company, he was a pre professor at uh, UNC State University. Um, and because of that, I like to say that because SAS has a long history in academia and education. And I think part of the reason is um, because our CEO comes from academia. And uh, because of that, we have a global academic program which means there are about 40 people around the world that are focused on training up the next generation of analytics talent. Um, and that's what Mark and I do here in Canada. So this is a snapshot of kind of um, what we do on an annual basis. We work with most of the major colleges and universities across the country. Um, and our mission is to really um, empower uh, the recent graduates and, and new students with the analytics tools they need to succeed in industry and then help connect them with our customers who are looking for new talent. All right, and I get this question a lot from students, why learn SAS? So I just wanted to throw up a few slides to give you um, kind of a, a snapshot of this, but again, go into more detail and some of the, more of the benefits um, later on this month. Um, one key thing to note is, as I mentioned, we have been around for over close to 45 years now, um, and 92 of the top 100 companies on the 2018 Fortune 1000 list use SaaS. Here are some of those um, well-known companies. Uh, in, in terms of Canada, we're used in all of the major banks, government, all the major retail companies. Um, so, so for those that say that SaaS is a dying language, they're poorly informed. Another reason is that you will get paid more as a student. Um, so MZ did a market labor analysis um, and found that students or recent graduates with SAS um, skills on their resume got paid um, significantly more over time uh, than other competitors. So full, full disclosure, this is um, US data, but we have a, we're establishing a partnership with MZ and they are um, gathering the, we're trying to get the Canadian data from them as well, but we do see um, so similar trends in our uh, market up here. So in terms of this, um, a great way to show off your skills um, when you do graduate and are looking for a job is to get a SAS certification. And there are a couple different ways to do that. We have um, a joint certificate program with George Brown. So if you go through uh, their program, you will get a certificate when you graduate. Um, you can also take a free exam and the exams right now are actually free for all students from now through May 31st, so it's a great time to take it. Um, and once you do pass, you'll get a badge that looks like this uh, blue icon here. And this is really neat because it can go directly onto your LinkedIn profile. And then potential employers can actually click on it and they'll be brought to a page um, that describes all of the skills you have. Um, so if it's predictive modeling, data mining, visualization, you name it, they're all different types of certifications that you can focus on. Hmm, I didn't know that. I guess I should uh, reach out and get my uh, logo put on there too on LinkedIn. Yep, absolutely. And then, um, <clears throat> If you do decide to participate in our upcoming competition that we're going to talk about today, everybody will receive a Cortex badge as well. 
So again, there'll be two types of badges. The winning team will say winner, and then the other um, badge will say participant. Um, and again, employers can click on this badge that you put directly on your LinkedIn or your online profile, and they'll be brought to a page that describes the competition that you participated in, as well as the skills you gained. So, you know, it's not just going to say SaaS skills, it's going to say data mining, predictive modeling, uh, visualization, um, all different things. So it's, it's not, um, you know, just SaaS either. This, this competition is really about learning the methodology um, behind analytics. All right, so what is the actual competition? So before I get into this, Mark, did you have anything to add? No, so far so good. Okay, great. And just to the to the everybody on the call, any questions about why SAS? Although we're going to be talking about it for the rest of our lives, we we think. <laughs> God, God willing. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're good, Lindsay. Great. <clears throat> okay, so now what is the actual competition? So over the past two years. Um, probably more now, Mark and I have developed a partnership with a business school in Montreal called HEC Montreal. They have a long history developing simulation games. They've done a, a simulation game for the past 10 years uh, with SAP that focuses on ERP systems. Um, and they have over, over 10,000 users per year um, in business schools around the world on this game. So we, they approached us um, and said, we'd like to build an analytics game and we'd like to, it to be powered by SaaS. And we said, absolutely, let's do it. So <clears throat> it is an online analytics simulation game. You guys will be competing directly against yourselves. So uh, for instance, that's one difference kind of between this and I heard Kaggle mentioned earlier, is it's not just kind of an open online game. You're, you're, you will have a leaderboard set up, which I'll show you a snapshot of, um, but it, you will be, the only people allowed on that leaderboard will be George Brown College participants. So it includes a case study, a data set, an online leaderboard, tutorials, you'll get access to SaaS software, as well as, um, you know, how-to videos, um, and we'll have some mentors and workshops available for you throughout as well. Um, and again, this competition really focuses on predictive modeling and data mining concept. Um, and it's meant to be in kind of a fun, hands-on and competitive environment. So what is the actual case study? Um, so as a player, you will be acting as a data scientist for a not-for-profit organization. You'll be Which given a data never, In real life, they'd never be able to afford one. <laughs> That's right. okay. <laughs> um, you'll be given a um, data set that is filled with donor history. So the goal of the case study is to see who can raise the most amount of money. And you'll be building your models against the donor history to determine who you should be targeting in your fundraising campaigns and who you can call. Um, and the objective is really whoever raises the most amount of money wins. So it's relatively simple. Um, this is a snapshot of the leaderboard. I wanted to share this um, because you will be uploading your results to the leaderboard. It automatically ranks you against, um, again, it's just, it will be just against the George Brown College participants. It'll tell you your operating surplus, so how much you have raised. Um, obviously, it costs money to contact people, so you have expenses factored in as well how many donors you contact, um, and then you can fill in your description here um, uh, to kind of, you can either give it, you know, a blank name, see some people named it default or none, other people named it, um, you'll, you'll see like neural net or decision tree. Um, it's up to you what you'd like to call yours. But the unique thing about this leaderboard is you can upload many times. So you'll be able to build a model, submit it to the leaderboard, and then go back and try something else. You can tweak it and you can try and improve your score over and over again to get higher and higher on the leaderboard. All right. Lindsay, so, there was a question. Yep, go ahead. Grace, you put your hand. 
I think Chris is just trying to sign in. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, my apologies. No problem, Tom. So, and, and um, I, like I said, I don't want to get too deep into this, but we'll be providing, um, uh, throughout the timeline, we'll give workshops and mentorship to make sure that everybody, um, you know, we want everyone to have a good time here and be set up for success. We don't want to just throw you in the deep end. Um, uh, so, so I will go through a few of the timelines right here. So this is our proposed timeline. As of now, we're going to launch on Friday, April 17th, and we'll start with a three-hour workshop. So it will be virtual. We will have mentors on the call, and what will happen is I'll go through a similar presentation to what I'm doing today. It's, it'll be much more in-depth. And then uh, my colleagues will go through a full kind of demo of the game so that everybody knows kind of the step-by-step -step where to start um, and how to get on the leaderboard at least once. And then we'll leave some time at the end for everybody to try and ask questions as well. Um, and then you will have the next uh, four or five days to improve your models um, and resubmit to the leaderboard. You can submit up to 30 times, so you have lots of opportunity to improve. Um, and then we will cut off the leaderboard, so it just means you won't be able to upload anymore at the end of the day on Wednesday, April 22nd. Um, and then the rankings as of that time on Wednesday will stand as kind of the final rankings. Now, we will also have a final presentation component on Friday, April 24th. And the reason we do that is, say, for instance, you didn't do as well on the leaderboard, um, your final score will be a split between how you did on the leaderboard and your final presentation. So even if you didn't get first place on the leaderboard, you still have an opportunity to impress the judges and improve your score. Or does it decline? Because the the, the presentation is probably the most important aspect of being a data analyst, right? To be able to explain your work right. to other people. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. So so that's what I mean by how your um your score will be split between the two. So uh, and, and again, we'll do, we'll go into all the details and how that's calculated and what that split actually is when we get closer. And because um, it'll depend on kind of how many teams there are and how many participants and all that. Um, but we just wanted to want people to um, to be sure to give them kind of a, a extra motivation, um, even if they don't get that first place on the leaderboard. It's not the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like Lindsay. here we go. Yep. Uh, Mark here. Uh, we okay. Well. We are going to um, uh, give them some resources. Yeah, OK, that, that last bullet point. Oh, well, I've got to go, but uh, that was the that was certainly something I wanted to say was the point number on, on this uh, on this slide. OK. OK, thanks, Ciao, Mark. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> so there is a cost to this. Um, the cost is not for the software. Um, it is directly for the cloud resources that you'll be using. Um, but know that you c it's coming with all of the uh, mentorship, the how-to videos, um, and all of the case material that you will need. Um, so I put on here, it's $50 either per team or individual. Um, the reason I said that is it, it'll just depend on how many people end up signing up. So if we get a good amount, we'll put people in teams, um, and each team will only pay once. Um, if we just have a handful full of people, we can still do it, but it's just going to be um, by individual. Is that you? You said U.S. here? Yeah. It's because this is a it's a global tool. It's run through our U.S. Okay. Um, <clears throat> U.S. office. Okay. Um, there will be prizes. Um, those are to be determined, but rest assured everyone will receive a badge no matter what. So you will at least have a concrete skill uh, and proof that you know that skill to put on your resume at the end of this competition. Um, all registration will be handled through Anissa. Um, we've worked with her in the past. She is a SAS graduate of the uh, George Brown College 
um, analytics program. So we're happy to work with her again, and she's going to help us kind of be your first um, point of contact throughout the competition. And then, as I mentioned, we are launching officially on April 17th, but we'll be sending practice resources um, to all of the participants, or even if you don't want to participate, participate, but you just are interested in learning more, um, we can open up the practice resources to everyone, and we'll send those out um, hopefully next Monday. Um, they are not required, but they are encouraged, so it will include an on-demand webinar, which provides a good overview of the game and kind of walks you through um, the first couple steps and a, a demo of the game. Again, we'll do this on the workshop on the first day, but it's always uh, good to see it a few times. Um, and then also we'll send a package of free e-learning resources um, and, and some online courses that will help students kind of succeed using um, SAS in this game. And again, it's not required. You don't need to know SAS. You don't need to have any um, history um, or experience using SAS to participate. Um, we will start from day one, assuming nobody has used Enterprise Miner before. If you have, great. Um, it's just a bonus, but uh, that is by no means a prerequisite of this. Lindsay, can we just do a show of hands? How many people have used SAS Miner before? E I mean, Enterprise Miner before. Yeah. So four, four of you guys? It's uh, Karen. Hi, Talon here. It's, yeah. it's, it's taught in the second semester course. Uh, OK. But not in the first. So anyone that's second semester probably has yeah. used and that's And that's why we have, because we have a mix of first and second semester on the call today right, right. in the club. And I guess if you're, because you are going to be learning it in the second semester, this gives you a little bit of a, a heads oh, up God. or a, um, an advantage for being a little bit ahead for the next semester. Okay, thanks, Alan. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so from this, how many people are interested in the in the competition? Oof. So we got quite a few. Great. All right. And how many um, how many are maybes? So if you put your hands down, maybes. Okay. And is there any information today that we can share to? Um, to answer any questions about why not or why in the competition. You can put your questions in the chat box or you can turn on your mics. No questions? Hi, hi, what's one here? I uh, will have a one question only. So is, is this competition uh, only like you, you have to use SAS in order to com like complete this competition, or you can use any other application in order to reach some points and then be in the first place in the leaderboard? You can use another application if you like, but all of the support and mentorship will be in SAS. So if you want to okay. use Python, for instance, you're welcome to try. Um, but uh, like the tutorials, and uh, you're gonna have you're gonna be on your own for that. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but we Lindsay, have. Sorry, okay. right, Lindsay. So, so, yeah, I thought everything was sort of a walled garden, right? Like where data, the analysis, and the scoring is all done within Cortex, right? Or is there an ability to pass um, scored files? Or, like, if you're doing some work with, say, Excel or something and you want to push it back into Cortex, does it have the ability to do that? Um, I have to think. Uh, it, it's set up so everything, the, so when the students pay the $50, they'll be um, given a point of entry through the SAS virtual learning environment, and Enterprise Miner will be set up in the cloud. It's on Amazon Web Services, and the game is already set up in SAS Enterprise Miner. Um, if you want to pull out the data and play with it yourself, you're yeah. welcome to do that. Um, it would just be a different virtual learning environment, which we can help with on a on on kind of a uh, offhand basis. Um, but uh, like I said, all of the the workshops and the tutorials will be based on the um, 
the Amazon Web Services image that we're using. But so if somebody like, wants to go rogue, they can do that. But like I said, the um, they'll be kind of on their own. <clears throat> yeah, but like if they want to implement something um, external and push it back, like let's say they want to provide their scores or do some. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Prediction. So the way the way you upload your scores is you pull a CSV out of Enterprise Miner and you upload it to the leaderboard. So as long as um, your 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 final um, submission is in a CSV format, you oh, can. Okay, so, okay, so that's this, fine. So then it's all, that answers my question then. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we basically import uh, the data from the application that we work in CSV format and upload it. Right. But the data is all set up and there'll be a pipeline already pre-set up in set Enterprise Miner. Um, and then you'll be manipulating your models within there. And then you pull out um, just the, um, it's only, you need the ID. What you're scoring is the ID of the donors and you're uploading just that to the leaderboard. Okay, perfect. Um, can I ask, uh, it's Aida, um, can I ask, uh, is it important which computer you're using to participate? No. Um, nope, because everything is in, in AWS in the cloud, so all you need is an internet connection. Perfect, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's a good one, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Uh, so I have a question about the team. So how many people can join within one team? Okay. Uh, so the, again, this this will be more kind of determined once we get closer to the date and we know how many people are interested. Um, but we recommend three to four per team. Um, uh, if we have, say, 15 people, I would recommend, you know, five teams of three. Um, if we have tons more people, um, we can make the teams a little bit bigger. Um, but on average, I think three people is really the sweet, sp sweet spot. And another question is, uh, so after we upload the final result on the leaderboard, uh, how many teams will we need to go ahead for the presentation? Again, it'll depend on how many we have. Um, so I'd love to have everybody present. I don't think we're going to have more than, um, you know, we can, if we can fit in 10 presentations, that's great. Um, I don't, I don't expect given the numbers today, we'll have more than 10 teams, um, but you never know. But I, I wouldn't, um, at this point, we're not planning on having um, a cutoff. Um, we would like to have everyone present. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And, and this will be the first time that we're doing a competition on online right. during, during intercession. So we, we feel that this is a uh, learning experience together and that we'll, flick, we'll, we'll, we'll be organic. So we'll work with what we have and make it the best experience that we can. And so some of those decisions that we make earlier in the process might change by the end. Yeah, and that, that's why I said all of the, we'll go through, I'll go through the slides that I went through today, again, at the top of the workshop on the launch day, and they'll be much more detailed in terms of the timeline and the guidelines and the rules and that type of thing. Um, and we'll also work with Anissa on making sure that um, you guys have all of the information ahead of time uh, before anything starts. So, and let's, so let's give a few minutes to Anissa, because Anissa is, a, you know, she won a global a global competition didn't she yes yeah, global with that right? it was yeah, so, it was yeah yeah so anissa say 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 hello hello crown on <laughs> thank you um yeah so this is going to be super exciting i mean i won with the great help of course from alan esther and i had a great team um, teammate xavier with me and um you know, we're going to prepare some how-tos and, and get everyone you know, information on how to present and how to, you know, dive deep with this data. Um, we should have that coming to you guys soon, so stay tuned. This is going to be mm -hmm. exciting. Okay. And and um, we're going to start. We're going to start uh, opening up the registrations for the competition on what date, Lindsay? 
Um, I will leave that up to you guys, or maybe Anissa and I can have a conversation shortly there, mm -hmm. shortly after this. Um, uh, but we can start as, I mean, we can start right now. Um, uh, there's I, no, I, put, I put April 1. <laughs> that's fine too. Yeah, there's no like official registration because we're just doing this with George Brown College. So we can, we can start whenever anybody's ready. Okay. Great. So, uh, so Anissa, so for the next steps, Anissa and Lindsay will connect to confirm some dates, and then we'll send updates by email at this time based on your registration at the meeting for the meeting. Perfect. Okay, everybody. I'll reach out to you just after this. Say that again. I'm going to reach out to Lindsay just right after this. Okay. okay thanks, thanks Anissa. All right. And so then. So um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say back to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people. Yeah. I was just going to say. So if if people don't mind, if I um, if there are no more questions, I'm going to just jump off. I I apologize. We're just juggling daycare and working from home right now, so it's a little chaotic. Yeah. As no sure many other no one people else. are. Yeah, yeah. There's other people on the call that have that same thing, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, but yeah, if there are no more questions at that at this time, um, people are welcome to email me, and we'll be we'll be sure to be in touch um, over the next couple of weeks before this launches. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay, for your time. All right. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So quick question. Um, so people who want to do this, they should reach out to me, like as a group, or reach out to Anissa right away, like without skipping me? How, is that, how, how does yeah, that work? To, to Anissa directly. To Anissa directly. OK. Yeah. So she'll she'll organize the competition and then you'll organize the club stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Um, it's too much work for one person. <laughs> okay. Let me share that deck again. Yeah, I think we're almost done. Yeah. Oh, we will have a guest speaker on April third. You. Oh, oh yeah, so great. The so, yeah, so yeah. people have got the invite, and I and lots of people have signed up. Um, Greg, Greg's worked in the analytics field for some time, both on the um, agency side as well as the um, corporate side, and uh, and he he'll he can speak to you guys about as well about the issue of SaaS versus not SaaS, and what are the what are the key skills that he, from his perspective that he sees but also how to how to how to think about the job search when you're stuck at home yeah because we, still, we have, still have to continue to work on it right yeah keep networking um yeah it will be good to have him on board yeah okay thank you for that um i think we are done questions questions any questions you guys have uh, I had a question about uh, yeah. the competition. So Lindsay mentioned that we need to pay fifty dollar per team or individual or per team. To participate. So I wonder. Oh, if it could be it could be either individual or per team. Like depends on if you want to enter by your by yourself, you have to pay by yourself fifty bucks, I guess. Mm. So I was so, just wondering because the club have a three hundred dollar uh, for a activity. So is there any way that we can? Uh, access to that to help us okay. no. get the money from college no, no not for this one guys it's because we're we won't be able to formally submit our our application for the club until after the school's running on a regular schedule okay how about so, after this point after, after this point we officially launch the club and for the further competitions are we able to get any finance for the competitions from the college well because you only have three hundred dollars a year. Yeah, you don't want to use them all at the same time. You're gonna have yeah, to decide sense. as a group how you want to use that money, right? And, yeah. and so if you use all the money on one competition, then yeah, you don't have anything left, right? Yeah, we will yeah, yeah. Yeah, we will talk so, about that within each other. Yeah. So for this competition, there's you have to decide whether you want to do it on your own or not. You could share it amongst 
the participants. So if you have, it's fifty dollars per team. So if you have four people on your team, then that's ten dollars each, ish. Yeah, the first yeah the first we have to decide. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first we have, yeah. Sorry, uh, just a quick question. I wanted to ask, uh, do you know if there are like, uh, what are the benefits working with the team and on your own? Is there like a different experience or like, I don't know, benefits? Yeah. yeah. So has anyone, has anybody worked on a data analytics team on the call? Mm -hmm. Not yet, right? Well, let me tell you in the work environment, it's all teams, <laughs> right? And so yeah. how, to, how to collaborate together to understand your business challenges, how to collaborate together to find out what's an insight and to, um, and to where to dig deeper is, uh, is, an, is a uh, preferred job skill or employability yeah. skill. So it's easier perhaps to work by yourself because of the depth of your personal learning experience but adding in the collaboration with other teams with other team members sets you up for an employability skill i know alan alan did you have a thought yeah i was going to say like uh, it's a common question i get asked this a lot but um i think that like whether you're working individually as a team i think you need to have the strengths to be able to bring so a solution to the table and then I, I i find that the advantage of working in a team is better that solution or to refine that solution so as opposed to you know the traditional team is where everybody divides up the whole and each does a, a part some do more some do less um i tend to think of teams as like everybody like has full ownership and then they critique each other and just make each other better right so yeah. Um, you know, it's a different learning experience working independently or, or, or with a team. But I think you have to bring all of your capabilities into into this, you know, to get the most out of it. I like that, Alan, because when when because uh, what's the definition of teamwork in analytics? Uh, to me, it means everybody works equally through the whole process. So you're an individual contributor in terms of doing your own work. And then you collaborate with the team to compare your individual works. So I think yes, you get, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get the benefit of the individual learning yeah. experience. And then you see uh, when you collaborate with your team and try to come up with with one answer that you want to present to the to your management, yeah. you see the complexity and also uh, you you raise the bar in terms of getting the support and of your of your opinion yeah like, like that you wouldn't get as an individual contributor um, but you also see the other half where it gets watered down because of the team's dynamics yeah where, where, where i feel situations where teams uh to fail or when they organize themselves like in this manner like okay person a is going to get the data person b is going to do the model and then person B is saying, well, person A did, wasn't able to get the right data, so I couldn't do the right model, right? So that to me is not really teamwork. It's, it's you know, working together to find the best data strategy and working together to find the best model is, is a better operating team than, you know, dividing up the pieces and then, you know, expecting it all to come together as in, in some holistic manner. Sean, did you have anything to add? Yeah, yes, absolutely, and completely agree. Um, in my um, experience, um, um, I've worked on uh, various uh, teams and in various capacities. Uh, the skills you acquire from working together on a team is, I can't emphasize the importance of that. Um, not only from uh, as you know the soft skill you acquire uh, when you have different perspectives, when you have uh, uh, individuals with different personalities, with different backgrounds and experiences, uh, it helps you build your relationship uh, uh, building skills, which are very key. Because when you work on a project, even if you're the only analyst in a in a company you're still going to have clients. You're still going to have um, other teams you have to cross collaborate with. It could be finance, it could be audit, it could be risk, it could be marketing. 
um, um, so uh, you're you're never going to be working in um, silo. And when I have managed teams in the past, I've I've even done an exercise where I've asked um, teammates to work together on a project. And to be honest, it's not only done faster, but two heads are always better than one. Um, so um, uh, it's amazing to see. Um, you know, some of the creativity that comes out of that process and completely agree. It's a holistic process, especially when you're part of an analytics team. It's not a factory type operation where, you know, you do it in silo, X does Y, and, you know, you're part of the entire process itself. And Clara, Clara's on the phone. She was just, oh no, uh, Lily as well. You guys just worked on a competition as a team. What, what's your thoughts on that from your experience? Hi everyone. So my my thoughts are basically uh, the same as what everyone has shared. I've worked uh, before coming to Canada. I've worked with uh, several groups, and it's always um, better in a work in a work environment. You always can work alone, especially when um, you have um, projects assigned. So everybody has something to offer in a team. Different skills, different. And is she's having Claire's having issues with her. Um, yeah, everyone. No, she yeah. disconnected. Looks like. Yeah. So sorry about that, guys. Claire, you're coming in and out, but the idea is that you're saying teams are good. Yes. So it's always yeah. best for me. I always prefer to work as a uh, part of a collaborative team than to work alone. So Ada, did we answer your question? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, 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 I understood. But it's just like, um, I don't know many people and it's just uh, how do we choose the teams or like okay. for the signing up and stuff. And Ada, that's a good point about people who don't know each other. We can help, we can help you connect. Anis is a great connector. So once we see if there are other individuals that, that aren't able to, and, we're, and Anissa has set up a LinkedIn group where you can reach out to people and um, and kind of see who's see who you might invite and tell them that you're available to join their team. Okay, so we'll sure. Help, good. We'll help facilitate connections. Sure, sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other questions? About so are you guys all in for the club? Show of hands. Are you in for the club? Raise your hand. Perfect. So it looks like. Uh, looks like everybody, yeah. Yeah, except for Alex. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if you haven't already signed up, because you're not, if you're not on this list on the slide that that's shown here, I encourage you to go to the sign up sheet to see. Um, to sign up and then we'll um, Anisa has also set up a LinkedIn group where we can collaborate as a closed group to meet new people in the team like Ada is suggesting and um, yeah I can also give the access to Anisa for the sheet for the people yeah. who signed up and then she can okay. just yeah that would be great people. that way I can uh, yeah add them into our LinkedIn group and so okay, we've we've got a, yeah so we've got a recording of this session which we will post on the LinkedIn group so as well as Alan, as uh, yeah sorry as Alan mentioned if we can get the link uh, to sign up as well yeah so as, Alan, oh, I, as yeah. I was just saying we'll post it on the LinkedIn group the link to the to the recording will be posted on the LinkedIn group and we'll send it out as an email for the people that responded to the to meeting today there were actually 50 people that replied to come to the meeting. And so there's a lot of other people who want us to send the notes later. And they there will also be people that you can reach out to, to join teams for the competition. Anissa, did you have anything else to add? No, I think this is great. I'm excited to work with you all. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you've noticed, like Tom was on the phone today. Mm -hmm. Sean is on the phone. Alan is on the phone, Karen is, and Andy wasn't able to make it today. 
Oh no, Andy's here. Andy's here. He's here too. Yeah. Yep. Do you have anything to say, Andy? Add add to Dave. It's okay. He's uh in his backyard planting. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've all signed up to be faculty uh mentors to help you through the competition and to be available uh through the through the intercession with any questions that you might have as you twiddle your thumbs looking for job opportunities <laughs> or learning opportunities. Anything else to say to conclude the meeting then today, Beth? Um, uh, if there's no question, I want to thank you for everybody being on here today to learn more about the club. Um, looking forward to doing more with you, all you guys. Let's get this going. Excellent, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day. Good luck on your final exams or assignments. Thank you. Bye. Uh, there's still a week to go. I forgot. Huh? <laughs> okay. I'm just going to stop the recording now. So thank you for everybody. I will see you all next time when we have a meeting about the competition. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Take care, everybody. Oh, we forgot to do the photo. Gosh. Oh, God. we forgot that one. Oh, are you? If for those guys that are still there, the twelve of you, can you stay on for a photo? Uh, oh. We have nine left now. Uh, are you guys gonna stay? No, they're all signing off. Shoot. Yeah, so so late left. Do we have to do it next time or? Yeah, we'll do it next time. Okay. All right. Perfect. I like to I like to f put photos on social media. Yeah, <laughs> forgot that one. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna stop the recording now and then we will okay. post this presentation on LinkedIn so you can let anybody who missed can watch it. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you again. Um see you next time.